Nightline continues from New York City with Cynthia McFadden. Exaggerated steps these horses are taking is what trainers want, and some will stop at nothing to achieve it. That gate is called the Big Lick. These are people who see horses as a thing, and they're going to manipulate them and abuse them to get the result that they want. Hello, I'm Larry Woods. Of all the annual or classic competitions that we turn out for that involve trained animals, it can be said that the majestic prancing of a grand champion Tennessee walking horse is pure artistry in motion. Nothing quite compares to a calm, handsomely groomed rider putting a barrel-chested stallion through its military strut. But the unique prance and the precise gait we associate with walking horses does not always evolve through bloodline alone. You see, some critics charge that many walking horses, most of all those competing at blue ribbon contests, are conditioned by intense pain over many months in order to lift their hooves chest high. Others say the weighted chains and padded shoes those horses wear inflict no more resistance or pain than a person wearing a heavy bracelet all day. The most controversial question is whether chemicals are used to blister the horse's ankles and to conceal the scars caused by the chains. So we asked a special assignment correspondent Sheila Hershow to hang out with the horse he set for several months and give us a report on why some champion walkers strut the way they do. Tonight we investigate a high-stakes horse competition where the winner can stand to rake in millions. The alarming story of a breed of horses treasured for their prize-winning prance being abused on hidden camera by a handler wanting to improve their fancy footwork at a terribly painful price. Here's ABC's Brian Ross with tonight's Nightline Investigates. Cynthia, Tennessee walking horses are known as sweet, gentle animals which makes what you are about to see all that much more outrageous. A powerful video that documents just how far some will go to win ribbons and medals at prestigious horse shows. A warning, for some this video will be disturbing to watch, but without seeing it, it would be hard to believe such cruelty could be possible. Many trainers prop the horses up on padded shoes stacked four inches high. They hang a so-called action device, a 10-ounce chain or a 14-ounce set of rollers, around the horse's ankles. Critics say these devices are cruel, but inspectors hired by the walking horse industry to check horses for pain or injury say the stats and chains are harmless. Inspection program director, Benny Johnson. Well, your four inches of padding the action device is really what has made this horse as popular as he is. Sharon McCaleb inspects horses in California. Do you think that there is a great deal of soaring going on? Absolutely not. No, the uh, horses are shown better. They're uh, presented. I mean, it's, it's gotten 500% better every year since the program started. Is this widespread? Do other trainers do this same thing? Have they been doing it for years? I can't speak about years before, but I do not believe that goes on now. I, I do not believe that is rampant. This abuse is known as soaring. In order for the horse to give that swim action, that freaky action, lifting and you know throwing his feet out in front of him, you have to use a soaring agent, either oil, mustard, whatever he may have, uh, diesel fuel, and you put in this area. Soaring involves the application of caustic chemicals, including oil of mustard, croton oil, diesel fuel, and other irritants that are applied to the pasterns or ankles of the horse's feet. And uh, it makes it more sensitive, it soars him, and when that chain hits that area, keeps banging on that area, the horse tries to literally climb out of that chain, trying to get away from the pain. All that action of the chain hitting that sensitized tissue of the horse's pasture causes extreme pain and causes the horse to lift his feet higher, producing the desired gait or big lick that's prized in the show room. For many people unfamiliar with horses, the elaborate gait of the Tennessee walking horse is normal, thought to be achieved through great training. But those familiar with horse training say the only way to achieve the show winning big lick step is by soaring the horse. Horse soaring is the act of using tools such as bolts or chains and chemicals 
to tenderize and injure a horse's feet. The practice, which is illegal under the Federal Horse Protection Act, can eventually cripple the animal. What they do is they sore the front feet so that they, they don't want to put much pressure on it, okay? So they only have two other feet to sit on, right? So they scoot the back feet up a little bit more to relieve that pressure. So normally a horse will hold 70% of his weight on his front feet. Walking horses is just the opposite, 70% on the back feet. Because of the soaring, they have to shift that weight. Soaring all by itself, the horse would just kind of go along like this. But the second that you put that chain on there and that chain hits that area, woo! Mm -hmm. I want that off of me. That hurt. Mm -hmm. And so it lives like that. After a lifetime spent with horses, Nathaniel and Jenny Jackson of Cookville, Tennessee, have become some of the most vocal opponents of horse soaring. We say stop it. If you ever see an action device, whether it be chains, rollers, or anything like that on a horse, they can tell you all day long till the cows come home, my horse is not sore. It's a lie. There is absolutely no value to having a chain unless it's activating something. And that's why they call it an action device. That device causes action. We say no. Nathaniel and Jenny have shown horses in competitions throughout the country and demonstrated the natural gait of the Tennessee walking horse. They're using artificial external means to enhance that horse's performance. That's what we want to, ke uh, to keep out. We're not out looking to get the, the, the clean horse. We're out to stop the sore horse or the person that is trying to present their horse as my horse is good to go and in their minds they know I've messed with this horse. You're just going to have to get used to it. Using pain to change a horse's show gait is called soaring the horse. Federal regulations prohibit that. And it's very common. It's as common as putting a bridle and a saddle on. California trainer Jenny Jackson says by the time many horses reach the show ring, their legs have already been battered by overweight chains and blistered by chemicals like oil of mustard, diesel fuel, kerosene, and lighter fluid. Jackson says she used to torture horses this way until she quit in disgust. I couldn't believe it, how vicious I had become. What, the cruelty, the monster that I had turned into to make those horses do that thing. And it just rips my heart apart because I know what those horses are going through. For what? For a blue ribbon that costs $1.95? It becomes an addiction. You like that look. What does it take to get that look? Jenny Jackson has been a walking horse trainer for almost 40 years and says it remains a widespread problem. She and her husband Nathaniel have been trying to clean up the mess, a mess she says she was part of when she first started in the industry. Californian Donna Benefield says to compete against other sword show horses, she let trainers illegally soar one of her own horses until her conscience rebelled. I saw them soar the horse. I saw the horse laying in his stall, moaning and groaning, moaning, where he could barely get on his feet. I saw the trainer go in and whip him onto his feet. Get your ass. Get up. <laughs> so that they would be able to get him out ready to go into the show ring, saddle him and get him ready. Bangs, bangs, bangs on him. You're doing this for a bite, what they call bite. The chain ain't biting the horse enough, so you put more and more chains on. The horse is allowed to wear up to a six ounce chain in the show ring. And sometimes during training, they'll use a much heavier chain. Jackson says Missy, a valuable mare, has been ruined by years of soaring. Her joints swollen by extra high stacks, her legs scarred by chains and mustard oil, her hooves cracked and foundered. The painkillers Missy must take, Jackson says, have caused her to miscarry twice in one year. She's been messed up. She's been, you know, screwed up. She's gone. He's chemicals literally cooked into their skin overnight. Plastic wrap is also used with salicylic acid, DMSO, and other chemicals 
to painfully strip away soaring scars and calluses that would disqualify a horse from competition. We videotaped two horses arriving at the show with their front legs covered in plastic wrap. This horse has probably had the saran wrap on for um, possibly 24 hours or more before coming to the show. And it's used to um, allow different types of irritants to be absorbed into the horse's skin. You have a lot of horses that trainers, uh, or the not professional trainers, or backyard trainers we call them, uh, abuse the horse. Then they take him to show and they cannot get him in because of scar rule. Then you have a professional trainer that stays up to date on everything and they can remove these calluses. Well, when you removed them and got the hair growth back, then, you know, you have uh, put the horse back being uh, in compliance with the Horse Protection Act so he can go on show. Critics say that means cleverly soared horses can compete and only clumsily soared horses like this bloody example would be barred. The American Horse Protection Association says two years ago it videotaped inspectors passing show horses that were clearly in pain. Now there's an obvious reaction <laughs> to a palpation. That horse <coughs> could, if he, if he was allowed, he'd probably go right over backwards. Now he's just reacting from thumb pressure on his pasture. This horse had passed inspection. Mm -hmm. Now if you notice, this guy's got both of his hands on the horse's bridle, and as soon as he tries to touch his legs, it takes, you know, trying to hold the horse with two hands because the horse is so much in pain. Before inspection, we were told, some trainers pinch alligator clips inside the horse's mouth to distract him from the pain in his ankles. Others use graphite to hide soaring scars and hair loss, or Vaseline and blood stop to disguise open sores. The horse is supposed to go through inspection with a clean... Yeah, they're not supposed to have anything on it. ...pastern. So whatever he's applying is, is illegal. Is illegal. Mm -hmm. We showed the American Horse Protection Association representatives undercover videotape we shot in Tazewell, Virginia in April. Again, you can see the horse um, having an abnormal stance um, known as uh, goat on a rock or standing in a bucket. Um, very typical of the show Tennessee Walking Horses. Um, we exaggerate our gates with show horse. A lot of folks don't like it. They're in pain. They're doing something that is totally unnatural. I've got two or three horses in the barn that are 15 and older that are still going. And you know, if it damaged them, looks like they had to give it up somewhere by now. Build him up four inches if he wants to, three inches. Put a three pound, four pound, whatever he needs. Then Joe his horse. Have fun and don't abuse that horse. Jacob Israel comes from walking horse country in Tennessee. He now shoes horses in California. He says he's seen chains and staffs cause strained tendons, arthritic joints, bone displacement, and most commonly, founder, which cracks the hooves. And that's well established that stacked horses and founded horses are almost synonymous terms. Walking horse inspector Sharon McCaleb disagrees. She's paid by the industry to check show horses for pain and injury. Horse, they have absolutely less leg problem, and I'm talking your show horses, have less fit and leg problems than any other breed. When that foot blows apart and it actually opens up and you look in to see that bone, you only need to see one of those. You never want to see another one. At the Los Angeles Horse Show, we saw two staff show horses Michaela inspected stumble and nearly fall. This horse in the show ring and this horse in the warm-up ring. Watch again in slow motion. Jacob Israel says a misstep can cost a staffed horse his foot and his life. If he happens to knock that shoe off in a certain way, that band becomes a shear and cuts that toe off. A few years ago, the stacks and chains were the subject of an Auburn University study requested by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. That study found evidence that horses on four-inch stacks can suffer tendinitis and hoof abnormalities, while 10-ounce chains can produce swelling and lesions within 10 days. Despite this, the Agriculture Department has not specifically prohibited these devices, and a federal court has upheld that decision. It's also legal to cut and brace a walking horse's tail to change its angle. They make one little cut right there, right? Right. And they put a scalpel in there, and they turn the blade and cut this muscle here, turn the blade, cut that muscle there, and then they put a brace to hold it this way. The horse must wear a heavy metal and leather tail brace like this one, which is often irritating to the horse.
Now illegal training methods developed in past decades have included blistering the horse's legs with oil of mustard, gouging the ankles with jagged chains, lining the stacks with lead, and driving nails into the horse's hooves. Horse owner Bill Mussman. I remember a day and age when you, could, you looked at a Tennessee walking horse feet and you didn't see any hair from the first joint down to the hoof. It was just all scar tissue. That doesn't happen anymore. They say trainers condition the horse not to flinch during inspection. And you just touch her like that and she'll go, ding, ding. She'll shy away from it. It hurts. So you don't want to do that. You want her to stand there and take the pain. So you have somebody standing up by her head either cranking her down with a stud chain, you know, in her mouth, a chain in her mouth, or, or a whip on her side or a board. But they'll either strike the horse in the head Or they'll strike the horse in the side. Meanwhile, yelling at it, stand up here, you know, be still, you know, or quit. That's called stewarding the horse. I think that got to me even worse than the soaring, the stewarding. It just, it was, it was really very difficult to stomach. Did this horse pass inspection? Yes, it did. Every time. Well, a couple times we were told to take it back to the stall and uh, steward him a little better. He was getting a little too obvious. In other words, the inspector told you to go back to the stall and teach your horse not to flinch? Yes. Making money for the trainers and the owners. And this is how we repay these horses. And Benefield says she received a threatening phone call telling her... ...tell me that I'd better back off. And if I didn't, the boys from Tennessee would be out here uh, to pay me a visit and that he would hate to see me get physically harmed. It's frightening. They are controlled by fear, intimidation, and threats. Helen Serha says fear kept her silent a few years ago when a trainer soared and lamed her horse. I, I, I felt like if you, we had spoken out at this time that you might have found your horse dead. They intimidate you so. North Carolina stable owner Bill Williamson says despite threats, he testified last year against a walking horse owner who gouged and blistered his horse's legs. He even made verbal threats to my boarders, my son, and on the barn in general. This photo taken in North Carolina last year helped convict walking horse owner Dennis Cannell of animal cruelty. Local Animal Control Director, Diane Quisenberry. And you can see the scarring in the raw places. And we later found that he had mustard oil in his tack box and very heavy chains. Stable owner Bill Williamson turned Cannell in. He said he got his methods from a walking horse barn that he used to train at, where he worked. He said he was taught to do this. He said he was taught, that's correct. Uh, he really didn't think that what he was doing was wrong. And uh, at one point I recall him saying, you just don't understand how you're, how, uh, you're supposed to, to uh, train Tennessee walking horses. To document soaring, Susan West and Tenny Mudge of the American Horse Protection Association say they took these pictures at public shows two years ago, even though U.S. Department of Agriculture employees warned them this was dangerous. We normally go together um, simply for safety reasons. We've been advised by, um, by USDA people themselves that we should not go to loan, uh, go to shows alone and that we should be very careful where we go with our cameras, especially during um, after dark hours. Three major sports in the South, um, college football, NASCAR, and Tennessee walking horses. 
It is the lifeblood of a lot of communities. Nathaniel Jackson is a breeder in Cookville who helped ABC News develop the story. He came to see McConnell enter his plea and push for awareness of abuse he says permeates the industry. The federal case against McConnell is based on abuse documented in this video. So the other 51 criminal counts developed from the undercover video were dropped in exchange for the plea. Prosecutors argued McConnell should get probation. I was surprised, I'll say that. I'm very surprised. David Howard, an organizer of the $41 million annual walking horse show in August, says most everyone in the industry expected McConnell to do hard time. While animal rights advocates say soaring is a common practice, Howard argues Tennessee's walking horse community is safe and humane. I'm telling you, you're never going to be able to eliminate everything in the industry. Why is that? Is it just because of the money that's at stake? It's the same thing in any sport. Why did Roger Clemens take drugs? I mean, people, some people are going to cheat. I know some of the officials in Shelbyville says, oh, it's not rampant and it's isolated. No, sir. No, ma'am. It's not. But Jackson says the ABC report sheds light on one of Tennessee's ugly secrets, which has already led to many trainers and groomers coming forward to report the practice. He says it's fear and money that kept the silence. We needed something that grabbed the consciousness of the public and uh, demanded uh, an outrage response. Thank you, Paul. They denied it for months until their acts of horse abuse were shown to the world. We're talking about beating and soaring at a Tennessee walking horse farm. The graphic footage made national headlines last week when the Humane Society caught them in the act. It was all happening at a farm in Collierville, Tennessee. Today, Jackie McConnell and two of his employees pleaded guilty in federal court here in Chattanooga. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter John Cole Newland joins us all new at 6. John Cole. David, the video is hard to watch, but it demonstrates why horse soaring is illegal under federal and state law. It's likely the three men involved won't be sentenced to prison, but can their case put a stop to a practice that's been happening for years? On Tuesday, all three pled guilty in federal court to knowingly transporting and showing soared horses. I hope this sends a message that uh, anyone else participating in this kind of uh, behavior or procedures stop. Stop now. They're not playing. Mays and Abernathy pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge. They could be fined $3,000 and spend up to one year in prison. McConnell pled guilty to felony conspiracy. He also entered false forms and attempted to cover up the sword horses. He may face a fine of $250,000. McConnell could be sentenced up to five years behind bars, but his plea agreement includes a provision that recommends he only get probation. McConnell's attorney, Thomas Greenholtz, declined an on-camera interview but tells Channel 3 Tuesday's hearing went as expected. People are now are very aware of what's going on. We know what to look for. All you have to do is walk in one of those barns and your senses will be overwhelmed with the, the smell of the caustic uh, chemicals. Your skin starts to burn. I've been in every barn in Tennessee. My skin has never caught, never caught, never caught, never caught. David Howard is on the board of Shelbyville's Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. But I'll be honest with you, we'll never get there. There's going to be somebody get by with cheating. I don't think you'll ever end it as long as there's a ribbon to be won and money to be made. For what? For a blue ribbon that costs $1.95? Okay. Thompson explained that trainers are sensitive about accusations of animal cruelty. We tried hard to, you know, to keep our image right. And uh, it... Uh, our horses have come so far that it's unbelievable. Pepsi pulled its sponsorship of, of the national celebration after the video was released. Howard tells me they are discussing whether to begin swabbing horses for chemicals. Sentencing for McConnell, Mays, and Abernathy September 10th. That's when a district judge will accept or reject their plea agreements. Live in the studio, John Quill Newley and Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Jackie McConnell was on probation during our investigation for his past transgressions of the law. This guy was continuing to operate. He's doing it under somebody else's name, and he's abusing these horses in some of the worst ways we've seen in this industry. I've been pretty good. Yeah. He ain't had no complaints, eh? It's appalling, it's cruel, and it's illegal.
The longer that I worked the stable, I became more and more aware of just how much pain these horses were in every day. They struggled really hard just to get up from laying down, but many times they were suffering so much they just couldn't. This angered the workers and made them whip the horses violently and even drag them by their heads. There's something really awful at work here. And if those spectators could see the true face of soaring, they'd be running these people out of the business.